I don't know if you know this, but uh, any Bible that you look at is nothing like whatever the originals looked like. The, the Bible was not uh, a book, it was parchments. You know when it says that Jesus went to the temple and they handed him a scroll and he unrolled the scroll and read from it? That's what the, the what became the Bible was a collection of all those scrolls. And, uh, and they, so it wasn't a book. And it certainly didn't have chapters and verses and titles like the story of the prodigal son or whatever. So all of those things were put into the text to make it easier to read it. So you could say, go to chapter 16, verse 4, and everybody could do that. But that's not how it was written. So when I read a passage like I, we read tonight, it's, it's kind of strange um, and, and, and I'm assuming, I don't know this, but it was on one scroll perhaps, but listen, Jesus just tells them they're on their way to Jerusalem. Right away, that's a code word for all Christians. Uh-oh, what happened to Jerusalem? He died on the cross. So his whole journey is to get there. Somehow it seems that Jesus knew that his fate was going to be ugly because of what he was preaching. I mean, even in the first reading from Jeremiah, Jeremiah says, do you replace good with evil? Here I came and preached to the people your word. I even defended them on, on their behalf. I begged you, God, to save them and help them, and they want to kill me. What is that about, you know? Will people take the goodness of a person and then they return evil? But yeah, there's another example of it. So anyway, in this passage, Jesus is saying that. I'm, I'm going to end up in these terrible situation. And after saying that, you would think there would be a response like, oh my God, why Jesus? And, what? and this mother comes up almost as if Jesus hadn't even spoken, at least in the text as we have it, almost like he hadn't spoken and said, I have a, I have a, a wish. So he said, what is your wish? And after he just said this, which was so profound, she said, can my two sons sit at your right and left? Can I get them the highest place? It's almost as if Jesus set it all up to make his point. I, I, I can't say that he did, but it's almost as if he said what he said because he knew he could feel what was coming on and, and led them to this point so that as they're asking for honors, he said, can you drink from my chalice? Oh, sure we can. We can drink from your chalice. He said, well, you will. And in that moment, he began to reveal to them, and I don't know that they got it, that this wasn't just for him, but they were going to have to struggle and suffer too if they followed him, followed his good news, his gospel, and, um, and, and lived it out, that they would pay the same price. Now, when we read this, of course, the point is that we get it, that we're those disciples in that story tonight. You and I are called to love no matter what, no matter what. And, and to love somebody that loves us, that's easy pie, you know. To be good to people who are good to us, everybody does that, even people that have no faith. But to choose the words of Jesus, to love those who hate us. We heard it this week. To pray for those who persecute us. Now that's a gospel message that's completely different. And what a power that can have in a world. You know, I know I, know I keep mentioning it, but the Ukrainians, after all this is over, if it's over and they survive it, hopefully, you know, how will they feel towards Russia? And many of them have relatives in Russia. The two nations are kind of like cousins. How will they be? Well, if they listen to Jesus, they're going to pray for the Russians. They're going to bless them, not hate them. But who wouldn't hate them after they had done all that they had done? Could you imagine if somebody bombed our neighborhood right here? The church blew up and, and we had nowhere to go and, and there were wounded and members of our families dead. Could you imagine how it would feel? And if we, could, if we could say that came from Lincoln Heights or whatever, how would we feel toward them? But Jesus said, 
You love them. You, you bless them. You pray for them. And why? I, I can only think two reasons. One is that most benefits us. We don't go down the hole of evil. We don't get sucked down to their level to be haters. But the other is, if there's anything that's going to transform the world, it, is, it isn't hate. It just isn't hate. It's love. So today, I think Jesus lifts us up to the highest, uh, the, the climax of everything, everything that he's about, because it's going to end there. And on that spot, on that cross, he's going to say, Father, forgive them all. They know not what they do. He will not only teach it and say it, he will live it. And that's the call that we receive again tonight. Please stand. Gathered as a family, united in baptism, let us call to mind the needs of our community and lift them up to the Lord.